Greetings, and welcome to The Power of Vintage. In today's episode, we're going to take my Amigo 1000 that I've been tricking out a bit. We've got the rejuvenator in there with a full one megabyte of chip RAM. I'd like to get a hard drive going in this guy. And one of the easiest ways to do that is with one of these. This is a Terrible Fire TF536. This has an IDE hard drive controller. It also has a 6830 CPU upgrade and then 64 megabytes of fast RAM. So those things together will give me a fantastic WHD load computer. I'm gonna try this out. We'll see if we make we keep it this way or maybe this will go somewhere else. And this just remains my floppy disk drive version. But in addition to this, I do need some other components that are in this bag that I will just receive from the sponsor of this video, PCBWay. Let's get going. Look at what's in here. This is a package from my friends at PCB Way. Again, the sponsor of this video. We'll talk a little more about them later on. And this, they built me a few couple things, printed out a couple circuit boards that will help me to make certain I can fit this in fit this in that Amiga 1000, which is what I want to do. Because in reality, and there's a lot of stuff going on in there now, especially with Rejuvenator, and the board, the, P, the TF536, is not going to fit inside. Ah, lovely. This is what we got here. Lovely, perfectly packaged, printed circuit boards. And what we're going to, what this is going to do... This is going to take the DIP64 socket and shift it, gee, upside down like this, from here up a little bit up and to the right. So within the case of the Amiga 1000, the CPU is right here. The 68,000 processor is right here. It's gonna take it and shift it up a little bit further towards the back of the case and a little bit closer to the edge of the case. This will make better room for the TF536. Let's get these opened up. Just a quick break here to talk about today's sponsor, PCBWay. As I mentioned earlier, PCBWay provided the PCBs I needed to make this upgrade to the Amiga 1000. If you're handy enough to design your own PCBs, they can help you get those made, turn your ideas into reality. If you're like me and you need a little help in this, this regard, you actually don't know how to design them or haven't designed PCBs before, there's a wonderful shared projects area on the website. Here you can search out designs shared with the community and select those that you need. This is what I did in my case and actually found some great designs here and picked one that works perfectly with this Amiga 1000. A big thanks again to PCBWay for their help, sponsorship, and just awesome support of the community. All right, we've moved into the Amiga 1000, opening it up. I've opened and closed this so many times, I don't think you necessarily need to see it yet again. I've got some recordings on some other videos where we install the Rejuvenator here, as well as when I tried to test it out, a Raspberry Pi in here, uh, or Pi Storm, not well, Raspberry Pi in a Pi Storm in here, uh, as well as just when I first got it and did a little quick little tear down and walk through. So you saw me do that. One thing that you did not see me do is just, this is just me adding a simple coin cell adapter here to power the real-time clock. It's a little floppy, but it works just fine. What we're going to do first, there's a couple things we need to do. We need to first, we ought, actually, we need to remove the ROM here because I want to replace this with uh, 3.2.1 ROM. This is a 1.3 currently. Actually, it's an original one that I pulled out of my Amiga 500. And then let's remove this floppy drive here. And I also want to remove the CPU. 
okay? These are the different things that I need to take care of first. So we're gonna first leverage out, uh, let's, let's go for the ROM first. This is a quick and easy one. Just gentle, pop this guy out. There we go, ROM is out, ROM is good. Set it to the side, let's grab a freshly burned Amiga 500, Amiga 1000, <laughs> 3.2.1 ROM. Which I purchased from Amiga Forever a little while back. I really enjoy it actually, I think it's a fantastic operating system. And for the purposes of getting a hard drive set up, you know, while it's not the classic environment, it's a pretty useful environment and I do enjoy using this guy. All right, so the next thing I need to do is, using this nice little spudger, we're gonna pop out the 68,000 CPU. And I'll show you the reason why I needed the help from our friends at PCBWay. All right, there's the 68,000 CPU. Here is the TF536. Orientating it upwards like this into the socket down there. So if I were to do that, number one, it's too low. If I just boosted it upwards, it's great, but it won't fit with the floppy drive. This will the this frame housing on the outside would interfere with the TF 536. They just wouldn't fit together. And I'm not gonna damage the or do anything to modify this house, the floppy drive housing here. So what we can do is there's a lot of different ways in which we can do this. There's lots of relocators that exist. Here's one, one such. There's a bunch of these. I've actually got two. <laughs> they're the exact same one, I just soldered them differently. Uh, but they're basically, I soldered them actually inversely, right? So what you see is here, they go different directions. I could, this one wouldn't really work here because it'd go like that and make it even worse. This one here doesn't really solve the problem because we still have this nice post in the way and it won't let you put it in place with that post there. So it's not gonna work. I have another one. This is the one that I've used in my Amiga 500 because I actually did pilfer this TF536 from my Amiga 500. This one works great. It's wonderful, but it won't work in here either, All right? Another one that I have, <laughs> I've gotten picked up a lot of these because I also try to try to do some other things within my Ataris as well. With the, I actually use TF536s in some of my Atari STs. Uh, I was trying to get one into my 520ST short, the small 520ST. Trying to use this guy to, to relocate it, so relocate the TF536 to an area where there's more space in the board so I can actually close the case. This one doesn't work because this actually has a ribbon cable that goes between the two, and that ribbon cable just uh, is just too long. It, causes too many issues with communication with the, T the, the CPU effectively. However, all that story to what I'm trying to do here. Thank you PCBWay for this. This is the relocator. I had some soldering footage of this previously, but I can't seem to find it. So I did solder this up myself. And you can probably tell from the not so great, I mean, Adequate soldering job. It works. I've tested everything out and you know, just a little continuity check for all the pins. It just works fine. All right. And so what this is going to do is this is going to shift this up like this, the socket effectively, allowing me to set this here. Now there's a couple things that need to take place. First off, if you take a look at this underside of the board, this board here, we got these pins here. Those pins in their current state, would short out on this guy here, all right? And what I'm going to do, it, it, well, fully inserted, what we're going to do instead, I got it somewhere on here, where did it go? It went somewhere, ah, there it is. We're going to 
simply use this socket as a spacer. I could use pin rows, but I actually like this better because uh, when you just do separate rows of pins, they can go a little ski wampus. Uh, this, this will work a little bit better to keep it in place. We will simply just snap that in. Sorry about the autofocus issues. Other side. That is not the best focusing job. All right, that looks like it's ready to go in. And what this will do is this raises it up, this up high enough that there's no conflict with this outer shielding here, All right? No chance of it touching. So what we're going to do next is we're going to create kind of a stack. Uh, another thing that also <laughs> caused me to have issues here, just to wait a little longer, because those first videos you saw of me previously uh, introducing this this uh, this project here, I had some I had some issues. Primary issue. Let's see if we can see. Yeah, we can point it out here. Uh, not here. There. One of those pins is not like the other. I broke off this end pin here as I was opening this up uh, or pulling this out of another socket indiscriminately. You can see there's a slightly bent pin over here as well as I levered it off. All right, so I had to solder on a new pin and didn't, <laughs> didn't have the right parts in order to make that happen. So I had to wait for the order to come through Got it through, and then had to wait for some time to film. So we're we're all just working things out. Now, what I can now do is I can just insert this guy into the socket here. And get this all the way in. Make sure that everything's good in this sandwich of contacts. And then we'll place this on the board. Oh, you know what, what I, what I want to do, so obviously I have some uh, tape here to keep uh, things from shorting out. I don't think there's any issues with it potentially, but I do it just to be safe. Another piece of tape, what I also want to do with this guy is just cover these parts over here. Because the card is going to overlap the, uh, the rejuvenator over here. Okay, let's make sure you can see. There we go. Let's just take a look at it, make sure every, oh, everything looks gorgeous. Let's see, I'll pull you off right here. As you can see, everything looks good down there. It's all looking nice in place. So, let's put it back up on the tripod up here. Oh, <laughs> as I raise the camera up higher again so we can get a bird's eye view again of what's going on here. So, the nice thing here is we have the ramen, we have the accelerator and IDE card in here as well. Everything is in place and looking good. Now we're gonna have to put the floppy drive back in. The nice thing is that it, oh, it fits perfectly. The design was awesome. The person who designed this, uh, what was the person's name again? If, you're, if you watch this, this is great. Matthias Munch. This is the Amiga 1000 C CPU Relocator version three. Now what we're gonna do here is we're gonna just route this guy over the top of the TF536. What that'll do is that'll kind of keep things in place here. 
keep this CF card from flopping around too much. And we'll plug in the power for the floppy disk. And we will assemble this thing back up, button it back up all together, and then go test it out. All right, we'll go to that point. All right, we have this Amiga 1000 back in its place of honor. I've switched on the monitor. We are practically ready to go and ready to flip the switch. Now I'm a little overconfident probably, but uh, I think it'll work just fine. The TF536 was working great in my Amiga 500. The hard drive I was all set up there, and of course I broke the pin, but was able to fix it and retested it on the Amiga 500 before swapping it over. So I feel pretty good that it's gonna work just fine. But we'll see. If it doesn't, well then I'll tear into it and we'll have more content <laughs> and a longer video. You probably know before I do actually at the moment if it's gonna work or not, because you can take a look at how much video is left. How much time is left on this <laughs> on this YouTube video? If it's long, you know it's gonna take a while. Oh no, nope, never mind. Ha <laughs> ha! Look at that. Yeah, looking good. Looking good. All right, let's take a look. All right, this is how I have it set up on my had it set up on my Mega Five Hundred. Let's go here. Keeps this info here. Lovely. Let's do a quick speed check you got to do the obligatory speed check. Let's see, a little over 9,000 dry stones here. Looks good. 17 times the speed of a stock 600, and Amiga 600. Pretty cool. Half the speed of Amiga 4000 with a 60 to 40 at 25 megahertz. We have ECS Agnes, NTSC high res, all the mode. The standard is this Denise, 60 to 30. 51.8, huh? okay, not 50 megahertz, 51.8 megahertz. All right, uh, looks good. We'll quit here. And now let's test out WHD load. Another media area here. And we'll go to one of my favorite of all games, Ultima 4. NTSC, because this is an NTSC guy. I'll load it up. You know, it's interesting. You can see the jail bars really well on the video recording, but from where I'm sitting, I don't see it here. Maybe it's the angle. Let me see. Yeah, well, it's a little better. I don't notice it as much. We'll end on that note there. With that, I think this Amiga 1000 is pretty much good to go. With the exception of that keyboard that is very yellow that I'll probably end up retro brighting when we have a little more sun here. But hey, thank you so much for watching. And again, a big shout out and thanks to PCB Way again for sponsoring the video and providing those PCBs that let me make this happen or help me make this happen and get this thing in all right if you like this like and subscribe if you don't don't like and subscribe either either way <laughs> it's fine by me if you have any comments put them in the comment below and uh have a wonderful day